So I'm very, very pleased to introduce Frank Niepold, who is the lead climate educator for basically for the U.S. government. He is the lead climate educator for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is our federal government's agency overseeing our atmosphere, our oceans. They do incredibly important work. Frank has a long career working on education and empowerment of people. So please join me in welcoming Frank to the stage. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step over here because I don't like standing behind podiums, but I don't want to be falling off the stage. So, you know, there, we're good. Uh, it's really nice to be with you. Um, I've been learning so much from this event, and uh, I think positioning this talk in this location is going to be really important for how we go forward. So in the spirit of that, um, and this feels like a special place. This feels like a special time, feels like a special event. So uh, in honor of, of the intent that we might have going beyond, um, I'm just centering, centering my thoughts in that. So, you know, as I was thinking about coming here and the work I'm doing and that, the front edge of the work I'm doing, this, this idea of acceleration, um, accelerating climate action, clearly our commitments and our actions are not matching yet. Uh, I was part of the Paris Agreement and delegation for the United States, the Paris Agreement, and that's where we set the goals. Um, now we're in the doing of it. Um, so think about this, Miami. Think about all the capabilities that, that Miami and the challenges Miami has, and just center yourself for that. <clears throat> Newark, New Jersey, another city, same coast, but different challenges, um, but a lot of challenges nonetheless. And then Honolulu, another coastal community, um, and they have significant climate challenges. The reason why I'm giving you these kinds of scale is because this is actually where climate action has its most impact. It's where you can make the most difference. It's, and there's a lot of different analysis that I, I, I draw from to make that statement. But so I work at NOAA. And under the undercurrent of all of this is we have a problem. For you in the United States, for those who are international, this is, this is more the IPCC for the United States, um, this assessment is your assessment. We, we do this with other agencies, but clearly the finding there, um, and it came out, this was from 2018, I was part of the, the administrative lead team for this, um, is you know, climate change presents a growing challenge to health, human health, safety, quality of life, and the rate of economic growth. Right? So what are we going to do about it? This is the scientific assessment, but that doesn't tell us what we're going to do. This just tells us we have a problem. So this, this work is, when you start thinking about how do we actually activate, accelerate climate action, there's some few issues to consider in that work. First of all, even though we think it is a very, very urgent crisis issue, it's not for most people. It's not. Um, and you know, it is, we see it as, and it is, it is the super issue, but it has low, um, low prioritization, especially when you start getting other issues like war or gun violence or crime or inflation, you know, it drops really fast. Not for us, but for others. Um, and we have a staggering transition in front of us. So that, just sit with that for a second. Um, Cities, like the ones I showed you, have a really persistent uh, challenge, which is they have a hard time making this issue a top priority for their people. Poverty reduction, climate change. Jobs, climate change. So this is an issue that leaders in these communities are facing. And we have these possible capabilities, but they're misaligned often. Our K-12 systems, our universities, our colleges, our community colleges, our zoos, aquaria, media, um, community engagement, non-governmental organizations, they're there, but they're not really aligned to this challenge that these other two set up. So that's why we're, that's just giving you some foundation. I found this quote from Governor Baker back in 2019, which I found to be incredibly useful, which was, if we're going to change a lot, and we are going to change a lot, very fast, because it's just going to have to happen, um, it has to be sustained. 
And in order for it to be sustained, it has to be supported locally. If it's not supported locally, don't expect it to be sustained. It's that simple. So that was, those are wise words um, that uh, Governor Baker gave. Now, I looked at Sun Valley's Climate Action Plan, but I couldn't find it, and it's actually in the county is where I found this. And the county has some very ambitious goals. And as I was walking around this morning, I had a hard time seeing how the county is moving forward on those ambitious carbon reduction goals. I couldn't see it. What's important about that is if you can't see it, there's concern about climate change, there's worry about climate change, there's anxiety about climate change, there's calls for action on climate change, and yet you already have a commitment to climate change, but I can't see that reality inside of this community. I have to look really hard. I found a, I found a local bus that was an electric bus. That was cool. I found three charging stations. Not enough for everybody. But um, there's some really ambitious goals here. But that sets up the, the context of this. That, you're not the only community that has these ambitious goals. If you look at the subnational level in the United States, if you add up all the subnational climate action that's going on in this country, commitments and beginning actions, it is larger than any other country in the world except for the United States, right? That means it's larger than China, which is the second largest economy in the world. This opens up a real door, because remember, sustained means local support, local capabilities, and this sets up a very uneven but robust capability for engaging people in deep ways, because they've already committed to action. You don't have to worry about committing to action. You have to actually support the implementation of action. So it sets up a real possibility. Now, for those of you who don't you know, look at the IPCC uh, every time a new report comes out, what this report is simply saying is what the orange line is, is what we say we're going to do and what we need to do against those goals are the, is the blue, green, and purple. So we've got a lot of work to go from what we have committed to to what we need to do. And that means that's the acceleration. We have to go from red, I think, to blue. Less risk, less impact. We've heard all the reasons why we want to do this. Now, this is the carbon part. So, <clears throat> we've been working at this with a large community of people at NOAA, other agencies, other partners all over the uh, country for quite some time and the first thing I want to, we found in this work of like, how do you accelerate this? First finding is it's multi-generational. So I hope you walk away with one thing is this is a multi-generational issue. And despite all of our scientific evidence, and I know my colleagues at NOAA and NASA and you know, other agencies would not be happy with me saying this, but it's true, is that despite all of our amazing, important, critical work, we're not taking the action, we're not moving at the speed we need to. So this theory of change, which we just released in, uh, a month ago, really is saying that climate action is accelerated by working with coordinated constellation of inclusive networks that are tightly connected to key points known as not working. This is the one thing I want you to walk away with, not working. Because it's the thing that we haven't invested in, is how do we work together? I heard a lot of possibility in this, this meeting but how do we do it beyond the forum? I go to many of these kinds of conversations, and what is missing is the infrastructure, the not working, the mobilization movement work. It's infrastructure, it's people, it's jobs to connect people. I'm a coordinator. I know one when I see it. Um, so I did a case study. I just did a, a quick um, test case. So I went to Fort Collins. They have... A, a commitment to 100% renewable by 2030. That's really ambitious. Um, and one of the things we're noticing is, is that one of the biggest limiting factors of hitting those marks is actually people. People, people not supporting it, and also people not having the skills to do the jobs. I'll give you two ex easy examples. In this community, probably wind is gonna be a part of this. The operation and maintenance person Working on those turbines is a technical skill, requires certification and ed education. That community college doesn't have one. Where do they go get those people to get those skills to be able to get those jobs? 
in order to meet that goal. Um, that CTE program at their, their local high school, I looked, it's not there. It could have been there. Um, it's not at the university. And it's, that's not that community college. And so then you look at these other capabilities that are important to building these, these social movements, building social capacity. And the reason why there's nothing connecting those is because there's no dots. There's nothing connecting between them to be able to do the work they need to do together. So there's gaps and, mis and misalignments. That's what not working does, is it starts building connections and realignments against other possibilities. You know, as the president said, I am in administration, but I do agree with this point he made, was that when he thinks about climate change, he thinks about jobs, jobs, jobs. Because there's a lot of hesitancy about the climate action. Not about climate science, about climate action. And he's right. It's all about jobs. Not all, but a lot of it's about jobs getting us moving in the right direction. That crane operator, there are two of them in this picture, you just need one year of technical training out of high school, and you make over $100,000. For every, there are five offshore wind turbines in the United States right now. There will be thousands and thousands of them. The, the number of people that have to do this work, we do not have them. We don't have programs to help them get there. There's a lot of misalignment. That's why not working is such a critical innovation. Um, so just to finish that point, that is the foundation of, the five, of one of the five offshore wind turbines off of Block Island, Rhode Island. It was built in Louisiana by people who have the skills to build offshore rigs for oil and gas exploration. Those people probably think climate change is an existential threat to their livelihood because we're going to shut down oil and gas. How are they going to make a living? Guess what? It's right there. Do they know the number of offshore wind platforms that are coming to the East Coast and eventually to the West Coast? It is a huge challenge to build the human capacity to do this work, but it's also, it opens up the door to normalizing a future where people can thrive in solving climate change. That opens up the door to us doing robust work in this country. So we have a transformational moment. What I see is an empowered society. We don't have one yet, but that's what, we're, that's what I'm working to do, and I hope that we could do that together. So this is about growing the, the community of people that work together. We have to be able to be in relationship with each other, know about each other, network with each other, in order to have effects that are coordinated. That's the only way change happens. But it's a people problem, not a scientific, technical, financial problem. It's a people problem now. So I invite you to that. In the Impact Hub, there is a, um, a paper we, we finished for this event, articulating the why, the how, and the importance with strong literature base. So uh, I encourage you to check it out. I'm easy to find. There are only two Frank Meeples in the country, and I'm the younger one. <laughs> uh, and LinkedIn is very active for me, so uh, let's, let's, let's figure out a way to work together. Thank you very much.